Hey Windowers and welcome to another episode of Windows on Windows, part of the series on the development of Windows 98. In this episode we'll be taking a look at Windows codename Memphis build 1546, the official beta 2 build of Windows 98 compiled on the 25th of July 1997. And by the time of this build, the Windows 98 name had been chosen and the branding itself had already started to be phased into the builds. I'm not sure on the first build that had Windows 98 branding, but I do know that the branding was being introduced around build 1544. So that build specifically was compiled on the 15th of July 1997, so about 10 days before this build. And in addition to the finalization of the name, there are many new features for us to take a look at in this build. So without further ado, let's start. So here we are at the desktop of Windows 98, and I can say that now, Windows 98, it had officially got its name at this point. And as usual, before we go into the actual operating system itself and look around, I just want to bring your attention back to the setup procedure that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So hopefully you notice there that the setup procedure itself is pretty much identical to the one we saw last time. So that was build 1525. The only difference that I've noticed is that obviously we now have the Windows 98 branding in the setup, which is good to see. Also, you'll notice that there's no clouds background in this particular setup. And that's just because this time I ran the setup from MS-DOS rather than running the upgrade version of setup from within Windows itself. And hopefully you also noticed at the beginning of the video during the setup that we also have now a new boot screen to reflect the fact that this is the official Windows 98 Beta 2 build. Okay, so coming back to the desktop, and we now have on the desktop itself this Welcome to Windows icon. So this was actually introduced as far as I've been able to work out in build 1544. This is basically what would become the Welcome to Windows 98 splash screen that appears when you first install Windows 98. So in build 1544, this was present, and I believe it is exactly the same as it appears in this build. The only difference now is that it does open automatically after setup. So on the actual first boot of the system when you first get to the desktop. So I have actually already done that and gone through that on here, but I will open it again now just to show you. So hopefully you noticed that at the beginning of this it referred to itself as Memphis but then when we got to this section it's now calling itself Windows 98 and hopefully you also noticed that we have now got the famous Welcome 98 wave sound that was the name of the music that was playing and that did make its way into the final release of Windows 98. So if we have a look here we've got a few options we've got the registration wizard so let's actually have a look at these as well. So this is the registration wizard. And as far as I'm aware, this is actually new in this build. Ah, okay, yeah, so it's not gonna let me because I don't have a modem or internet connection. But like I said, that's new in this build. The next link takes us to the tune-up wizard. So this was actually something that I covered in the last video in this series. So this is not a new feature here, but there is a handy link to it from the welcome app, which is quite nice. Then we've got a link to the release notes. So here we go, Microsoft Windows 98 Beta 2 release notes, and you can see the date is the 31st of July, 1997. Again, I went through a similar thing in, I think, um, the first Memphis build that I looked at in this series. I had a look at some of the release notes, so I'm guessing these are gonna be very similar, but obviously with all those Memphis references replaced with 98. And then lastly, we've got the beta guide, which I think is online, but let's try. Oh no, it's actually not, it's another document. So, like I said, by this point in 98's development, the name had been chosen and it was being slowly but surely introduced into the system itself. So let's have a look at a few places where you'd expect to see that name. 
So in system properties, if you have a look here, we've still got Microsoft Memphis. So this is still using the code name. Let's have a look at Winver, which I've already done, as you can see, not to give it away. But yeah, Winver, it's still showing Windows 95, which has been exactly the same in all the 98 builds so far. That has not changed at this point. And then lastly, let's have a little look in Command Prompt or MS-DOS Prompt. And here you can see Microsoft Windows 98. And obviously it is down here on the desktop as well, if you didn't notice that. So the last change that I noticed on the desktop was that the inbox icon for the inbox app has disappeared. And obviously we've got this new welcome to Windows icon, like I said, but everything else is the same as in the previous build. The only other thing that you may recognize here that was not here before is this icon. So this is called view channels. And if you click it, you get this interface here, which is basically Internet Explorer with a kind of a more of a full screen skin on it which would be I guess better for viewing channels now there was a feature in Windows 98 like this uh, however I have to confess that I never actually used it so I know there was a channel bar so I know that there was this feature where you could watch I'm guessing it's like online broadcasts but like I said I never actually used it so I don't really know anything about this and it's hard to find information online about some of these things as well but if you do know anything else about this then obviously feel free to leave us a comment because I'm sure we'd all like to know but yeah this is basically the extent of my knowledge on this okay so let's have a look at what's changed in Explorer and actually I wanted to mention this first because I forgot this earlier but actually quick launch you may have noticed is actually enabled by default in this build whereas in build 1525 it wasn't so that is one change so let's go into my computer and have a look at what else has changed here if we go into the view menu one small change is now what was known as the browser bar has been renamed the Explorer bar however the functions are exactly the same probably the big biggest change in Explorer, although it's still relatively a small one, is if you go into folder options here. So this first tab is completely redesigned. We've now got the introduction of something very similar to what was in the final build of 98. So we can choose between web style, navigation, classic style, which is like Windows 95, and then custom where you can basically choose, pick and choose what settings you want. Okay, so let's have a look at what's changed in the start menu in this build. Firstly, and actually this ties into what I was just talking about and I forgot to mention it, we have a new banner and this banner says Windows 98, which obviously is what it would be like in the final build. The other change on this first menu here is that what was called the Memphis Help Desk has now been renamed to Windows Update, which again, did stick around into the final build. And obviously it takes you to the Microsoft Windows Update website, which is not going to work. Okay, so then let's go into uh, programs. And here, firstly, and I'm guessing this is an error, but there's a link here to the C drive basically, and it just goes to an Internet Explorer directory uh, uh, where there's a link to Internet Explorer. Although I'm guessing that's meant to be on the main menu. And then there's also a link to the desktop here, which is kind of weird. Okay, so let's go to system tools. So there's one new thing here, which is called the version conflict manager. And this looks like it's something to do with backups. So you can see it's got backup date, backed up version, current version, restore selected files. I don't recognize this. So it makes me want to say that this was not in the final release of 98, but I could be wrong. And apart from what you can see here, I'm not sure about you know what this does or anything else about it really i've not been able to find out so again if you know any more information please share with us in the comments because i'm sure we'd all like to know so also here not in system tools but in accessories we've got a link back to that online registration wizard that i showed you earlier and then imaging here which is something that i've not covered yet so windows 95 had an imaging application but at some point during the memphis development it was replaced with kodak imaging as you hopefully saw there on the splash screen this does not debut in this build it's from an earlier build probably build 1423 but this leads me on actually to something else that i wanted to actually talk about so if we go into control panel and then into add remove programs windows setter and this could be honestly guys a whole episode all by itself but what i did was i went back through the windows setup so that's this list here where you can select basically different parts of the os that you want installed or not i went back through this list for 
all of the builds that I've looked at previously, including Windows 95. So I looked at build 950C, which was the OSR 2.5 release of Windows 95. So basically the most up-to-date version of 95. So I checked 950C, I checked Nashville, which was build 999, and all of the Memphis builds that I've looked at so far. And I basically compared this list and I looked at what features were included and what were removed and what ones were added and so on in all of the builds. And the reason that I kind of thought about doing this was because when I did the last episode on build 15.2.5, I thought that I'd selected all of the optional components to install so that I'd be able to actually cover everything and, you know, literally see as much as possible what had changed. When I went back and checked, I'd actually not done that. So, for example, when I was researching that build, I was reading about the Kodak image viewer, which was meant to be there, and I was a bit baffled because I couldn't see it. At the time, for some reason, I didn't think to check this list, to check whether I'd actually selected it, but like I said, I'd actually not selected all of the components. So Kodak image viewer, as an example, that was something that was introduced a few builds ago. I'd just not actually seen it. So for the purposes of completion, and you may skip this section if you're not interested, but I will quickly go through what changed over these last few builds in the series so far. So firstly, in Microsoft Codename Nashville, that's build 999, compared to Windows 95, these items were removed. Briefcase, desktop management, imaging, OpenGL screensavers, Microsoft NetMeeting, Defrag, disk compression tools, multimedia sound schemes, Windows messaging, Microsoft mail services, and Windows messaging. These ones were added, so we had the addition of the clipboard viewer, Win pop-up, Microsoft Athena, multi-language support for Central Europe, Cyrillic and Greek, Jungle Sound Scheme, Musica Sound Scheme, Robots Sound Scheme, and Utopia Sound Scheme, the Microsoft Network, Microsoft Exchange, and Microsoft Exchange Services. Then the next build, so moving into Codename Memphis, build 1400, we have Briefcase coming back, Desktop Management coming back, Imaging coming back, Memphis Tour, which replaced the Windows 95 Tour, OpenGL Screensavers coming back, Windows Scripting Host, Microsoft NetMeeting coming back, Virtual Private Networking, Disk Compression Tools coming back, and also the Microsoft Athena was removed, and we also had the addition of Baltic and Turkish language support. We also had the multimedia sound schemes coming back. We have the introduction of online services. Windows Messaging comes back and replaces Microsoft Exchange, as does the Microsoft Mail Services, which replaces Microsoft Exchange Services. Internet Mail Services comes back, and so does Windows Messaging. Then in build 1525, we have the addition of Disk Space Cleanup Applet, which I showed in that video. DVD player in the multimedia section, which again, this is a thing that I missed in that video. And we also have the addition of the TV viewer with the broadcast data services and the TV viewer itself. So coming back to build 1546, and there are two new options in the optional components here. The first one is this new one called Internet Tools. And if you look at the details here, you'll see it's got a new component called Microsoft Front Pad, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. And the second new component is in Multimedia, and it's this one. It's called Microsoft Net Show Player 2.0. Now, again, I don't know a lot about this, but it sounds very much like the TV viewer. So again, a way to watch basically streamed media. And again, if you know anything more about this, then please do let me know in the comments below. Okay, so let's have a look at Microsoft Front Pad, which is that new application that I just mentioned. So it's not actually in the start menu. You actually have to go into program files here to find it, but you can see it has its own folder notice this new icon as well which is very similar to WordPad so it seems to be that's what they were going for here if you look this looks a lot like WordPad the name is like WordPad the icons like WordPad and what is this program well this is essentially a precursor to a program that did ship in at least the first edition of Windows 98 and it was known then as Microsoft Front Page Express. So you may have used this program or you may have heard of it, but basically it's a HTML editor, quite a basic HTML editor. So remember, this was the late 90s, so the internet was becoming massive at the time. And remember all that stuff about how Microsoft were trying to bring the internet literally into the front face of Windows. So into the shell, into File Explorer or Windows Explorer as it was known at this point. So this is just another extension of that same thing, giving consumers the ability to actually create their own HTML web pages, which again, in the late 90s was massive. So I'm sure you'll know about things like GeoCities and you know all of these places where people could just, normal people could just literally upload their own web pages about their life or their interests. So yeah, this was definitely on the same sort of lines here with this front pad. And that is really everything that I've noticed in build 1546 of Windows 98. As usual, if there is anything I've missed or if you have any corrections, any questions, any comments, please leave them in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. I will see you then.